Czasem, czasem mam day. Czasem, czasem mam day. I'd like to ask you individual questions first, and then I'll open up the floor to questions, and then again get some reactions and ask you questions again. And there are certain points that I'd like all three of you to react uh, from the diverse backgrounds that you come from. Uh, Kembo, I actually uh, wanted to talk to you about, and yes, I finally confirmed that we don't have sin in Buddhism. A lot of us like to use sin. Uh, and I sat with Kembo, finally, somebody who is very comfortable in English, and I uh, could understand him very clearly. He has confirmed that we prefer to use unwholesome acts or begetting negative karma. Um, so, yes, so we don't have the idea of sin. And uh, in fact, I was just reading, it's a Western writer, of course, and I think it's because uh, it's lost in translation, and for the lack of a better word, we prefer to replace all of that with sin. So then, uh, what Kembo is, you, you were differentiating between, um, you know, how people use the differences between Theravada as well as Mahayana Buddhism and Hinayana to actually uh, make an excuse for being able to eat meat. Um, there was something that I was reading, and uh, it was from the history of vegetarianism in Tibet, like Kimbo, we just we were talking about it earlier at the lounge. Um, there I read something about the unwholesome act, that there's a difference. Now this is where the difference is drawn. The act of meeting, eating meat as an unwholesome act and the act of killing also as an unwholesome act. And then there's a difference drawn there, saying that perhaps the act of eating meat, if you haven't intentionally killed the animal, is, uh, does not have a greater negative impact than the act of killing. I would like to re you to react to that. Like well, going by your question, I think um, what Lord Buddha said was that it's called Tongte Doksum, which means having seen and then having a doubt, uh, and then having hurt. If you were to, if you, for a monk or any person that who have heard that it's being killed for yourself, that for a specific person, and then also if you doubt that, oh, this meat must have been, you know, slaughtered for my consumption, and then also if you have seen somebody killing it for yourself, then you ha you have the full unwholesome action, that you have all three points. But if you don't have that, even Lord Buddha said that you don't really have the unwholesome action. Because, for example, like if I go to a restaurant and order meat, and then, I mean, indirectly you're involved in it, because if you haven't ordered it, you, it wouldn't be, the meat wouldn't be there. But still, since you haven't seen it being slaughtered, since you don't have a doubt that it's being killed for you, then you don't have the full unwholesome action. So if you know that it's certainly being killed for yourself, and you have seen it, and you have heard that it's being killed for you, which is tongte doksum, if you have, if you have both three, no, the, all the three points, then you get the full unwholesome action. The Tazal Hensu itself has really um, has a lot of uh, taken taken a lot of initiatives to ensure that uh, the Bhutanese population in general actually reduces our intake of meat. Um, very noble initiatives, and I think with the, the utmost good intent. Unfortunately, a lot of us Bhutanese like meat, and unfortunately, a lot of us like to hoard. So then this special holy month, because you vi you're visiting Bhutan for the first time, and David, you're here for the second time. But um, what happens is, when these, uh, they, we call this the Sagadawas, right, the holy months. Um, so when it's about, when it draws nearer, so people start stocking food. I know for a fact that our hoteliers will actually book kilos of meat in advance. It's hid hidden in the deep freezer, and everybody comes, but there's meat in the freezer, and they'll be like, oh, no, it's not for you. It's already booked, and it's like 50, 60, 80 kilos of meat. Um, Kembola, don't you think then it defeats the purpose? I mean, of course, uh, Venerable Sulalabe himself was also sharing how he was actually promoting what you would call flexitarianism, um, that you don't have to be vegetarian throughout the year, because even in the teachings of the Buddha, he doesn't force you, but if you would attempt to become a vegetarian, then these are certain steps that you can actually um, take to become a full uh, vegetarian then. What about if you could comment on a hypocritical behavior and how we could change our attitude? Well, I think that would be really hard to do. Uh, but we can s start up with a very single step. You know, as I said, you know, we got to start somewhere else. For example, uh, with killing of animals during Saga, um, before Sagadawa, it's really sad you know, to know that and to see all those things happening. The first step that we could do is just um, as a lay practitioner or as a beginner, one can actually 
implement our initiative prog program where we can skip a meal. Like for example, if you go to a restaurant during that month, you know, instead of ordering a, instead of ordering meat, you can just say, you know, can I have a vegetarian meat? You know, that would be one very uh, initiative and a very simple step by saying, you know, if they say, hey, if you ask, like, do you have dumplings? And if they say, oh yeah, we have meat dumplings, then instead of saying, instead of saying meat, you could say, can I have uh, cheese or some kind of vegetables? So though I think that's one way of, you know, starting it from the very first and I think there will be there are many, but I think that's the sim simplest step we can take. I think uh, I think there's a realization among Bhutanese actually. I remember when I returned to Bhutan after college, there was really just one vegetarian restaurant that I could go to called Gassel Hotel. That was not really purely veg. I think it was purely veg. But now I'm happy to share after discussions with uh, Odiki that uh, she was telling me Putan Sweets offers a full vegetarian menu. And there's the South Indian restaurant that is, offers full vegetarian menu. Then there's Ambient Cafe that also has a full vegetarian menu. And by the way, these vegetarian menus are not boring. They're quite exciting if you actually want to, um, if you keep an open mind and go to these uh, places. Hotel Shanti Deva and what Kembo actually shared, uh, DGPC, Drew Green Power Corporation actually, I think uh, it was with the Changsa Trust that they approached this corporation and uh, they actually have taken, are going to take the initiative uh, to have veg meals for the events, vegetarian meals for all the events. I think this is a fantastic initiative, not because I'm a vegetarian, but because of the very convincing arguments that have been made by the speaker so far. Um, if you would like to try the vegetarian options available for you in Bhutan, which is not Ema Tatsi, you're most welcome to try these restaurants. Um, it's difficult, you know, I wanted to share the Bhutanese diet with both of you as well. You were talking about how you experienced being vegetarian in New York was so much easier than returning to Hong Kong and eating that chicken leg and the wonderful meat that you get to eat in Hong Kong. Um, it's, you know, and then your presentation, fantastic, by the way, the kind of information that you managed to distill from the not so interesting documents that are available online, I think it really hit home with everybody who's sitting here because you spoke in a language that could be understood by all of us. Another thing about Bhutanese, we have a sense of humor. So that thing you said about how much uh, methane um, a cow actually puts back into the atmosphere and contributing to global warming, a Bhutanese would come to you and say, you know what, actually I think I'm helping, you know, because I removed that cow from the equation so that cow does not live anymore to produce that amount. I know you guys thought that, you <laughs> see, you're all laughing. So see, you have this. So how do you counter such an argument? Well, first of all, um, I think uh, not th uh, th different people will make up different arguments, you know, to justify why they can still eat meat. Um, I think at the end of the day, um, we are not trying to eliminate meat. Um, the message or the slogan or the whole campaign of, let's say, Green Monday, which actually is very similar to like Meat Free Monday in the UK or Meatless Monday in the US, is that um, we are just trying to shift people's behavior to eat less meat and more green. Because after all, I mean, we are not, I, I doubt our ability to fully convert people to become full vegetarian. So actually, behind the message of Green Monday is, is very zen, is that, um, you know, in, in Buddhism, we talk about finding the middle way. You know, everything. You know, anytime when you swing to an extreme is not good. So a middle way um, or a common ground, a common platform is usually what is best to hopefully you bring most people on board. And um, I guess when people make arguments against vegetarianism or try to justify meat, I say, well, you know, take it easy. Now take it easy. We're not attacking you. We're not attacking the meat eaters. Um, we are not saying that you need to eliminate it completely. But um, let's try to be greener. You know, if you want a better planet, if you want better health. Now, of course, um, going back to one element that actually is very interesting is that actually not address, not necessarily addressed by uh, Campbell, by Emily, or even by myself. There's one. There's a fourth element which is very important. Okay, you have vegetarianism and Buddhism, you have vegetarianism and uh, environment, vegetarianism and health. But fine, last but not least is vegetarianism and taste. You know, how do you make good tasting food? You know, if the food itself tastes good, 
quite frankly, it doesn't matter if it is a meat dish or a non-meat dish, people will like it. So one of the biggest obstacles has always been, you know, why do people justify eating meat? Is that they think meat tastes better. But of course, Emily can say much more to it, is that it's only because through the processing that they're adding a lot of chemicals and salt and you know, ingredients that are actually not good for our health. But another element is how can we cook more delicious, more yummy vegetarian dishes? And if you can achieve that, you know, then you know, that's when the paradigm really starts to shift because you are no longer talking about a sacrifice. You know, you're no longer talking about a sacrifice. You're talking about a real gain, that I'm eating healthier, I'm eating more environmentally conscious, more animal conscious, but last but not least, they taste good. So um, one of the things that we do is, after talking about all the benefits, is we go to the restaurants, exactly like you said, is challenge the restaurant and say that, first of all, there are markets for vegetarian or green eaters. I can assure you they are green eaters because globally this trend is happening. You know, people like Bill Clinton, people like Al Gore, people like Paul McCartney, people like Brad Pitt, Natalie Portman, you know, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. These people, even they are either full vegetarian or like 70, 80 percent. And these people are all doing it. So this is a global trend. So we challenge the restaurants and say, make better and more delicious vegetarian dish and of course wholesome as well. And then the earlier these restaurants create good tasting dishes, the earlier they attract new business. And once that puzzle is solved, once that bottleneck is broken, then that's when the tipping point shift. And all the restaurants now in Hong Kong want to join the movement because it's all of a sudden they become a caring company they become an environmentally friendly company, and last but not least, they are gaining new business. They are gaining new business. So I guess at the end of the day, after all the reasons, after all the numbers, um, one thing that we cannot trick ourselves is that we must make vegetarian food taste good, because that's how people ultimately will make the decision on what to eat. Johnson, Johnson, Monday. 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 Oh.